This video is part of consumer theory. In it, I will present constrained utility maximization. Constrained utility maximization means a consumer considers both their preferences and what they can afford or their budget constraint when making consumption decisions. The consumer's goal is to maximize their well-being or utility subject to the budget constraint that they face. In other words, choice involves both what you can have or your budget constraint and what you want or your preferences. Remember that any bundle in the budget set or on the budget line or inside of it is affordable to a consumer. At the same time, a consumer has preferences over two goods that can be described by an indifference map. Assuming preferences are monotonic, then more is better, so the higher the consumer moves in this direction, the higher their level of utility. Is it possible for a bundle inside the budget line to be the utility maximizing bundle? No. That's because compared to any bundle inside the budget line, there's some other bundle that has more of both X and Y and so would necessarily be strictly preferred. We have our first fact about the utility maximizing bundle given a budget constraint. If preferences are rational, meaning complete and transitive, and monotonic, then the optimal bundle will be on the budget line or else monotonicity would be violated. So we know the optimal bundle will be on the budget line. Is it possible that a point on the budget line and on an indifference curve that's not tangent to the budget line is optimal if we're consuming both goods and preferences are rational, monotonic, and convex? That is, could the optimal bundle be a bundle like A where the indifference curve is cutting through the budget line? No, it's not possible. For example, consider bundle A. At bundle A, the indifference curve is steeper than the budget line. Since the indifference curve is steeper than the budget line, in absolute value, the slope of the indifference curve, called the MRS, is greater than the slope of the budget line, called the MRT. What does that mean? Well, according to this consumer's preferences, as shown by her indifference curves, if starting at bundle A, consuming one book and 40 meals, this consumer would be willing to give up 16 meals in order to be able to purchase the second book. On the other hand, according to her budget line, when she buys the second book, she needs to only give up 10 meals in order to spend the same amount of money. Again, according to her preferences, she's willing to quote pay for the second book by trading 16 meals. But according to prices, when she buys the second book, she only has to pay in the form of 10 meals. So that second book is cheaper than she was willing to pay, which means she can buy that second book or get that second book and be better off, which puts her on a higher indifference curve. Let me try that again, but this time let's assume that the consumer's original consumption bundle is on the budget line at a point like B where the MRS is less than the MRT. I will now explain why B can't be the utility maximizing bundle. Even though it's on the budget line, it's not where the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line or where the MRS equals the MRT. Here's why. At bundle B, the consumer's consuming four books and 12 meals. According to her preferences or indifference curves, she's willing to give up one book if she gains four additional meals. At the same time, according to her budget constraint, by giving up one book, she's now able to buy eight additional meals. Four additional meals was enough to keep her as well off as she was when she had four instead of three books. But in fact, according to market prices, she can get eight additional meals when she gives up a book. So she can basically buy more than she was willing to buy to just remain as well off, making her necessarily better off 
when she does that, moving from four to three books, but also moving from 12 to 20 meals. So that's our second rule. The utility maximizing bundle not only has to be on the budget line, but also has to be at a point on the budget line where the slope of the indifference curve, called the MRS, equals the slope of the budget line called the MRT. Once again, the big idea here is that most of the time, the slope of the indifference curve will be identical to the slope of the budget line at the utility maximizing bundle. Now I say most of the time because there are some exceptions to this rule, and we'll consider those in class and a different video. The reason for this tangency condition is because in order to optimize the rate at which I'm willing to trade the goods must equal the rate at which the market dictates I trade them through prices. Otherwise, there's an opportunity for arbitrage, which would make you better off. There's another way to express this tangency condition that is very intuitive. It's called the bang per buck approach. Start by recalling that the MRS is by definition the ratio of MUX to MUY. Likewise, the MRT is, by definition, the ratio of P of X to P of Y. We can do a simple transformation here, some algebra, to get this tangency condition written as a different expression. One way to see this algebra is just to recognize that if we multiply both sides by MUY and divide both sides through by P of X, then we're able to cancel out MUY on the left-hand side and P of X on the right-hand side to leave us with MUX over P of X equals MUY over P of Y. That means that your utility maximizing bundle given a budget constraint will be the point where the marginal utility per dollar is the same on both goods. To better understand this, let's think of X as representing hamburgers and Y is representing steak. Suppose you like steak more than hamburgers. Maybe consuming an additional steak increases your utility by 100 utils, whereas consuming an additional hamburger increases your utility by only 40 utils. At the same time, steak is usually more expensive than hamburgers. Suppose the price of a steak is $25 and the price of a hamburger is only 10. In this situation, the marginal utility per dollar spent on each good is four. That is, 10 bucks spent on a hamburger buys you 40 utils of happiness, which means that for every one buck or one dollar spent on a hamburger, you get four utils of happiness. 25 bucks spent on a steak buys you 100 utils of happiness, so for each buck or dollar spent on a steak, you get four utils of happiness. When the bang per bucks on each good are different, then there's some different bundle that has more of one and less of the other good that makes the consumer even better off. Only when the bang per bucks are equal is the consumer as well off as they can be.